It's that time of year. Kids heading back to school and back to the fields to play sports. As a parent, how do you help them avoid getting injured? Well, joining us now in this sponsored interview is Dr. Julia Rawlings. She's with the University of Utah Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. What are the most common injuries when it comes to kids in sports? So we see kind of two types of injuries. We see trauma from kids playing sports, but we also see overuse injuries mm. that happen to kids. So if you're growing, are you more likely to have a sprain or a break? Yeah, so kids with open growth plates or that are still growing are actually more likely to break a bone than to cause uh, to have a strain or a sprain. And that's because the bone is the weakest link, so much more common for a break in, in younger children. I have a six foot seven son who has just always been ginormously tall. And as he was growing, he was always growing fast. And that was definitely always the issue when he was playing sports and and sometimes just hanging out with friends and and you know playing around like a kid would do not necessarily on the soccer field or the football field, when it so. comes to contact sports more injuries in the arms and legs yeah, so contact sports, we tend to see more trauma, um, definitely to the arms and legs. Also, we see concussions, but a lot of arm and leg injuries. Okay, so talk about overuse. What do you yeah, mean by so that? Yeah, so overuse injuries just happen when the body is using itself more than it's trained to. So we see those in sports with repetitive motion. So in running, we see a lot of overuse injuries in the legs. And then with sports that use the arms a lot, like baseball and volleyball, we tend to see a lot of overuse injuries in the shoulders and the elbows. So what do you suggest to parents that know the benefits of having your kids involved in sports, but maybe you have a child that is like in the club sports and doing, doing things so repetitively, not even having an off season sometimes because there's ways in which they're still training and, and playing in off season. What do you suggest to parents? Yeah, so we like kids to be in sports. We want them to be active, but it's actually recommended that kids don't spend the whole entire year in a single sport because mm. that will actually promote injury. So what we encourage them to do is participate in multiple sports and to have some period of rest in their specific sport during the year. So not play baseball 12 months, but maybe take a three month break just to prevent those overuse injuries. And doesn't that improve the sports ability because all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're using a different muscle memory and a different part yeah. of your brain. And It's actually been shown that professional athletes and NCAA athletes that played in multiple sports up through high school actually tend to do better and, and end up in professional sports. I didn't know that. Yeah, more I than kids that specialize early. Swimming coaches out there are like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. I was a swim mom. And yeah. Oh boy, that is your round. Commitment. Okay. So you say make sure though your child is warming up always before yes. any sport. Yeah, so make sure they're warming up, make sure they have the proper equipment. So good helmets that fit, um, you know, the shoulder pads, the shin guards, proper fitting cleats, all of that will help prevent injuries. Because they grow out of them. Mm -hmm. So now's the time of year that you check again to see if they fit, right? It's not just a price issue, it's a safety issue. And then yes. post on your neighborhood page who wants to trade yeah. out for yes, the next there you go. Up, right? Yes, um, exactly. Also, this is a good tip for today, keep them hydrated. Yes. yes, oh my goodness, it's so hot right now. So we need to make sure that they're having time to take breaks, they're cooling off, they're staying hydrated with, with water, but also with drinks that contain electrolytes, um, and then take breaks in the shade when they can. And they're not gonna always know that they need the hydration, because it's not always obvious of like, I'm thirsty, it's gonna show up in what other ways? If um, it can is... show up with things like headache uh -huh. or dizziness, okay. or uh, you actually lose your appetite sometimes. Oh, I felt nauseated mm -hmm. in St. George yes. earlier this week when it was 109. Yes. I can't imagine <laughs> playing football in that right now, and I know practice has started. You say rest is very important too. Yes, so rest is very important. It's good to have a day or two off during the week. Um, Kids that are playing football right now are often doing two a days if they're in high school. So make sure that they're resting and sleeping and hydrating between all of those practices. All right, if an injury does happen, what do you recommend that parents do? So I recommend that you contact the University of Utah. Uh, at the university, we have a great clinic. It's called the Orthopedic Injury Clinic mm. that can take same day appointments for any child um, from the age of five all the way up through all adults. So this is sprains, this is fractures, this is dislocations. This is all of the injuries to the arms and legs. We don't see concussion in this clinic, however, so if there is a, a concern that your child has a concussion, contact their doctor or go to a, an urgent care or the emergency department. And all the resources are there, so it's kind of a one-stop shop, yes, right? Yes, it's great. We can connect you with surgeons if you need it. We have the bracing, we have physical therapy there, all of the things. Orthopedic Injury Clinic, everybody, with, the, with Utah U of U Health, and if you you want more information, it is on your screen, a phone number to call even, maybe jot that down or go to our website, abc4.com slash GTU and our thanks to U of U Health for sponsoring this interview. Doctor, thank you for being here. Thank you so much.